So in the last video, we saw that we could retrieve a location from the Google Places API. In this video, let's go ahead and actually display it in a list here. So in order to display a list, we need a list view builder. So within our body, below our text field, I'm going to pass in a list view. So I'll say list view dot builder. We know the item builder takes a context and the index. Along with the item builder, we also need the item count. So for the item count, we'll pass in predictions and then pass in length. And here in the item builder, we can return a list style. Within the list style, we'll pass in a title. And for the title, we'll say text. Access the predictions. We want the particular predictions using the index. And in order to get the name, we can select description and pass in to string to convert it to a string. Let's save that out. And we'll pass in a semicolon here. So now let's go ahead and try and search again. So here I'm going to pass in Apple. And we actually don't see anything here. That's because the list view doesn't actually have a height. So for that, I'm going to pass in shrink wrap and set that to true. I'm just going to reload the app, open this up, pass in Apple here. And as we can see, we're getting our particular results. Now let's also pass in an icon next to our predictions. So in our list style, we'll pass in leading, a circle avatar. Within this, I'll pass in a child, which is going to be an icon. And within that, we want icons.pin underscore drop. And let's add the color of the icon to colors.white. And there we can see we're getting our icon. Now, once we get the search results from our start point, we want the user to be able to select the search result. In order to do that, I'm just going to set up two state variables. So let's come here on top. And here, let's create a start position and an end position. The data type for these two positions is going to be called details result. And it's going to be available to us from the Google Place library. Once we get a location, we'll use the ID of that location to get the details of that location. The details will include the latitude, longitude, and a lot of other details. So that data type is called details result. And obviously when the user has not selected anything, it can be null. That's why we'll make it nullable. Similarly for the end position, we'll call it details result. And we'll also create two more variables, which are going to be the focus nodes. That will help us keep track which particular text field is focused. So here I'm going to say start focus node and an end focus node. The data type is going to be focus node. And they both are going to be non-nullable because we'll set them up in our init state. So for that, we'll mark them as late. That just indicates that we're going to be setting them up at a later time before we use them. So here in our init state, I'm going to say start focus node is equal to, and we'll call the focus node method to set up the node. And similarly, end focus node, and we'll call focus node to set up the particular node. Whenever we set up nodes like this, it's always nice to dispose them off. So for that, we'll use the dispose method. So we'll say dispose, always call super.dispose. And then here we'll say start focus node and we'll mark it as dispose. Similarly, for the end focus node, we'll call dispose. So now we have both our nodes set up and we also have our start and end point set up. Now we can come down here to our list view builder and set up the on tap method that will allow the user to select the particular search result. So I'm going to pass the on tap below the title. Within the on tap, let's get the place ID. So we'll say final place ID is equal to access the predictions, get the particular prediction that was tapped and then access the place ID. Now we need to get details of the particular place. We can again access the Google Place API to do that. So we can say final details is equal to, then we can access the Google Place library dot details dot get. And within that, we can pass in our place ID. Now Google Place dot details dot get is an asynchronous method. So we can pass in a wait in front of it so that we can wait for it. And in order to use a wait, we need to mark that method as async. So we'll do that here. Now we can check if details is not equal to null and details.result is also not equal to null. That is the result that's returned from the details. And we can just make sure that the state is mounted. We'll now check which text field was selected. We can do that by using our focus node. So we'll say if start focus node is selected, that is it has focus using dot has focus. Then we want to set the state start position is equal to details dot result. And we can also update the text field with the value by accessing the start search field controller. 
access the text and set that equal to the details dot result and then access the name property. So the text field will display only the name, but we've actually stored all the details of the place into our start position variable. Let's save that out. Let's reload our app. Now here, let's pass in Apple. Let's select the first result. And obviously we forgot one thing. We did set up the start focus node, but we didn't actually add it to the text field. So we need to do that. So coming up here to the first text field, let's pass in focus node and set that to the start focus node for the first one. And for the second text field, let's pass in focus node and pass in end focus node for the second one. So now the text field knows which focus node to access. Let's run that again. Again here, we'll pass in Apple. We got a result, let's select it. And as we can see, the name is updated here and we've stored the particular details of the place into our start position. Now let's set up the endpoint. See here, we were checking if the user was in the start node, then set up the start position. Otherwise we'll say else, we wanna say set state again. I'll just copy in these lines here, paste it in. Instead of start position, we'll mark that as end position. Instead of start search field controller, we'll say end search field controller and set up the name there. Also, once this is done, we wanna remove these particular predictions. So for that, in the set state, let's just pass in predictions and set them equal to an empty list. And I'm gonna do that here as well. So let's pass in Tesla here. If we select that, we see our predictions are removed and our data is stored in our end position as well. Now, once both the positions are fed in, we want the app to take us to the next screen. So for that, below the else block, I'm just gonna check if start position is not equal to null and end position is also not equal to null. Then we need to navigate to the next screen, which we'll just do shortly. For now, we'll just print navigate. We also need to take care of when the user clears out the position. We wanna make sure that the end and start positions are emptied out and the prediction is removed. So let's come up here to our text field. Within our on changed of our first text field, in this else block, we need to clear out the results. So here we'll call set state, set our predictions equal to an empty list and set our start position equal to null. I'm just gonna copy that and paste that in here as well. Mark this as the end position. We can also just pass in an icon here that'll help us clear out the text field. So for that, we need to pass in this property called suffix icon to our input decoration. See here below the border, let's pass in suffix icon. We'll just check if the end search field controller dot text is not empty. Then we wanna display a button, which is gonna be icon button. And for the icon, we'll say icons dot clear underscore outlined. Otherwise we wanna pass in null. I'm just gonna save that. As you can see, when there is a value in the text field, it shows us the clear icon. In the on pressed, we wanna just set the state by setting the predictions equal to an empty list. And the end search field controller, we can clear it out using the clear method. I'm gonna copy out the suffix icon and paste it in our start search field controller as well. See here below our border, paste that in, save that out. Instead of end search field controller, we'll use start search field controller here. So let's just fix that. So now, if we click this cross icon, we can see that it clears out. Let's try it again. So we'll say Apple. We select Apple. For the endpoint, let's pass in Tesla. And instead of using the cross, if we just manually delete it as well, we can see that the predictions go away and so does the cross. One last change we'll make here before we take the user to the other screen is that we won't allow the user to select a destination until a start point is selected. That way, the moment the start and end points are selected, we can take the user to the other screen. So let's come to our end search field controller text field. And here, we'll pass in the enabled property and we'll only enable it once the start search field controller dot text is not empty. And the start position is also not null. Let's save that out. I'm just gonna reload the app, pass in Apple here. As you can see, we've not selected it yet, so we can't select the endpoint. If we select Apple here, now the endpoint is available and we can select it. Now let's go ahead and navigate the user to the next screen. So for that, I'm gonna create a new screen. In our screens folder, I'm gonna call that map screen dot dot. Let's import in a stateful widget. Let's call that map screen. We need to import in material dot dot. 
and save that out. Now let's come back to our search screen and here at the bottom where we were detecting if both positions were filled in, we can use our navigator.push, pass in the context. For the route, we'll use a material page route. The builder will take a context and it's going to point to our map screen. Let's just save that out and quickly format that. So let's pass in our endpoint. Let's select our endpoint. And as we can see, the moment it's selected, we're taken to the other screen. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and set up our map screen.